Hello everyone, my name is Vivek and this is my video on permutations and this could be acting as a preparatory video for students who are preparing for Soliton Technologies and in this video I'm going to use a very small technique which could help you to prepare on this topic permutations. So let's get started with our video. So the very first question here is how many ways can the word pencil be arranged if the vowels have to be arranged in alphabetical order? How many ways can the word pencil be arranged if the vowels have to be arranged in alphabetical order? So the number of vowels in this word is E and I. So since it's a six letter word, we may not be very confident about solving this question. So before we do this question, we, let's get to our basics. Our basics is like, if you're not very sure about this question, but let's get started with a small word. So if a small, we'll see how exactly a small word would behave with this condition and then we'll try to apply it on the six letter word. So for example, we'll take it for at, at. So how many ways can you arrange the letters of the word at? We know at can be arranged as at and ta. It can be arranged in two factorial ways. So two factorial ways, it's nothing but two ways. So similarly, if I have to arrange the letters of the word cat, we know cat can be arranged as cat, cta, and we know tac, TC, TAC and we still have TCA and we could still do it as ACT and ATC. So it can be arranged in three factorial ways which is nothing but six ways. If this can be in six ways, if I say, if I put a condition right now saying that how many ways can you arrange the letters of the word add if A and T should arrange in alphabetical order. So if it should be in alphabetical order, only AT is accepted, then TA is not accepted. So instead of two factorial ways, we would only get one arrangement that is AT is accepted, but TA is not accepted. It's almost similar to two factorial divided by two factorial, which is nothing but one way, one way. Similarly, if I put this condition CAT, how many ways can you arrange the letters, the word CAT, if A and T should arrange in alphabetical order, it still is possible, if CAT is possible, we would s still have uh, a ACT is possible and ATC is possible. In the other three letters, we don't have this possibility working. We don't have this working. So if that is the case, instead of, here also the answer would be three factorial divided by two factorial, which is nothing but three ways. If I put it for any other alphabet also, how many ways can you arrange the letters the words cat if c and t should arrange in alphabetical order we know cta is possible we could still say cta is possible cat is possible and act is possible so all three is again going to be three ways only so when a couple of alphabets are arranged in alphabetical order in a three letter word when a couple of alphabets are arranged in alphabetical order in a three letter word it is actually divided by two factorial, it's nothing but three factorial divided by two factorial which is three ways. Here in a two letter word it becomes two factorial divided by two factorial which is equal to one way. It is almost giving you the answer as for AA there's only one arrangement. When we put this word instead of ATV I put it as AA, for repetition whatever answer I would get the same answer is what we get for AT when A and T should arrange in alphabetical order. Similarly, for CAT, if I put A, CA, CAT gives you the same answer as CAA or CTT. There also the answer is 3 factorial by 2 factorial, which is 3 ways. So this behaves like identical. So if in case, if I put this condition right now, I add another condition to this word CAT. How many ways can you arrange the letters of the word CAT if all the three alphabets should arrange in alphabetical order? If all the three sh alphabets should arrange in alphabetical order, we know that if three are arranged in alphabetical order, all three will behave identically. So your answer should be three factorial divided by three factorial, which is nothing but one way. I would believe the same answer is what we would get because the answer would be ACT. The only way we could put in alphabetical order is ACT and not uh, any other way. So which means this question can be answered the way we answered questions for identical alphabets or repetition, repetition of alphabets within a single word. So if that is the case, how many ways can you arrange the letters to the word pencil? How many ways can you arrange the letters to the word pencil if bubbles have to be arranged in alphabetical order? It's very clear, pencil can be arranged in P-E-N-C-I-L is a six letter word. So six letter word can be arranged in six factorial ways without any conditions. When I say E and I should arrange in alphabetical order, 
it would behave like E E or I I. So answer would be six factorial divided by two factorial. The reason why it arranges like that is we know in E and I, E could go to the left of I for half the time and to the right of I half the time. When I say E and I should arrange in alphabetical order, E and I is arranged in alphabetical order. I is accepting E towards its right and it's not accepting it towards its left. So it obviously means half the arrangement is not possible because there's only two alphabets which are identical here. Maybe if there are three alphabets which are identical, then it, we divide it by three factorial or three, al three uh, alphabets which are three vowels we have and all three should be arranged in alphabetical order. The answer would be six factorial divided by three factorial. If there are four vowels, it would be six factorial by four factorial. A very simple technique. Let's get started with the next question. Our next question says, how many four digit numbers can be formed with one, two, three, four? If the tenth digit is always greater than the unit digit. We know how many four digit numbers can be formed with one, two, three, four is nothing but four digits and four digit numbers and four spaces. It can be arranged in four factorial ways, which is nothing but four into three into two into one. It's obvious because one, two, three, four, in the first place I could put any of these four digits there. If I put, so I could arrange them in four ways. If I had put two there, the second digit I could apply them with one or three or four. So it can be arranged in three ways. And third digit, still if I put four there, third digit can be arranged in two ways and the last digit can be arranged in one way. If there's no condition given. But the condition says the tenth digit should always be greater than unit digit. What does that mean? The tenth digit should be greater than unit digit means if I, if I take a couple of numbers, 23, 23, and two, 23 is not possible in this arrangement, but 32 is possible because the tenth digit is greater than the unit digit. So this is not possible, but this is possible. If I take 42, 42, 42 is possible, but 24 is not possible. So for every two arrangements, I get only one arrangement that is being possible. So in, which means if, an, if 1, 2, 3, 4 are arranged in four factorial ways, we don't get the answer as four factorial. Instead, we would get the answer as four factorial divided by two factorial because two numbers are behaving identical or repetitive. Two numbers are behaving like repetitive numbers here. So our answer would be four factorial by two factorial, which is nothing but 12 ways. A very similar question to the previous question. So let's get quest the next question, get started with the next question. 12 students are arranged from 1 to 12. In how many ways can they be ranked such that A's ranking should always be higher than B's ranking? A's ranking is always higher than B's ranking, which says A would go to the, if it is 12 people in 12 arrangements, we know it, it, it can be arranged 12 people in 12 ranks, it, they can be arranged in 12 factorial ways. But when I say A's arrangement should always be greater than B's arrangement, we know these two people are almost behaving identical. Because A should always be greater than A could be going higher than B, but the A cannot come lower than B. So half the arrangement is not possible. So A and B are identical. So if that is the case, our answer would be 12 factorial divided by 2 factorial. For the question A. For question B, our answer would be A should be greater than B and B should be greater than C and C should be greater than D. So all four are behaving identical. So we know the answer would be 12 factorial divided by 4 factorial, a very simple technique, a very effective technique as well. Let's get started with the next question. How many 4 digit numbers can be formed with the digits 1 to, 1 to 9 so that, such that 10th digit is always greater than the 100th, 1000th digit, I'm very sorry, 1000th digit is greater than the 100th digit, 100th digit is greater than the 10th digit and 10th digit is greater than the 1th digit or the unit digit. So thousands digit should be greater than the hundredth digit, hundredth digit is greater than tenth digit, and tenth digit should be greater than the ones digit. So we'll try to understand this question better. So if I take four random numbers, that is one, two, three, four, here the possible arrangements is four digit numbers that can be formed is through four digits and four places, it's four factorial ways we could form four digit numbers because they have talked about spoke about thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones. It should be a four digit number. So we could make four factorial arrangements. But when I say 10th digit is greater than the 100th digit, which means the greater number should be at the front, which is four is in the front. The second greatest number should be in the 100th place, which would be three. The third greatest number should be in the third place, which would be two. The last one should be at last, four, three, two, one. Instead of, out of all the 24 arrangements it can be make, may, making, only one arrangement is accepted, that is four, three, two, one is accepted. When there are four digits which can make four factorial arrangement, only one arrangement is possible to fit into this condition. 
If that is the case, for this particular question, we know that how many four digit numbers can be formed from with the digits 1 to 9? How many four digit numbers can be formed? We very clearly can say four digit numbers four digit numbers from 1 to 9. So, we know the first digit can be filled in 1, 2, 3, 4. First digit can be filled in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Any of the 9 numbers can fill it. So, 9 ways. Second digit can be filled in 8 ways. If you had taken 6 as the first digit, 6 cannot be used again. So, the next digit can be filled in 8 ways. The third digit can be filled in 7 ways and fourth digit can be filled in 6 ways. We know one each digit gets reduced because when we pick one digit out, repetition is not allowed. So one digit gets reduced each time. So we get nine into seven into six, seven into nine into eight into seven into six. So many numbers can be formed without any condition. So many four digit numbers can be formed without repetition. But if I put a condition saying that the tenth digit should be greater than the hundred thousand digit should be greater than the hundredth digit and hundredth digit should be greater than the tenth digit and tenth digit should be greater than the ones digit, we know all the four digits behave identical. So, it can be divided by 4 factorial. The reason is because all 4 are giving you only the greatest number will be in the first, the second greatest will be the second, the third greatest will be the third and the last number, the, the least among the 4 digits will be at the last place. So, our answer would be 9 into 8 into 4 into 8 into 7 into 6 divided by 4 factorial which is nothing but divided by 24. So, which is nothing but 48 into 6 is 48, 48 24 goes twice. So, 2 into 9 is 2 into 7 is 14. 14 into 9 is 126. We would have 126 arrangements like this which is possible. So, a very simple technique. You become a master in this technique. You could solve a lot of questions which could be simplified. Very complicated question can be simplified. So, let us get to our next question. How many ways can 7 people A, B, C, D, E, F, G be arranged in 7 chairs if A, B, C should be always be to the right of D, E, F? So, ABC is always to the right of DEF which very clearly says ABC and DEF are identical to each other. So, if that is the case, we know ABC, DEF and we have ABC, DEF and G. If I had not given any condition, 7 people and 7 chairs, they can be arranged in 7 factorial ways. That is very clear. But my condition right now is ABC should always be to the right of DEF. It is very similar to ABC should can be to the left of DEF and it can be to the left of D, it can be left of E, left of F and similarly D could be to the right of A. It can be giving you so many number of arrangements. But when I say if ABC should always be to the right of DEF, I am saying ABC and DEF are identical. So when they are identical, the number of ways they can be arranged is so, the number of ways they can be arranged is 7 factorial divided by 6 factorial because ABC and DEF are identical. So, ABC 3 alphabets, DEF 3 alphabets, totally 6 alphabets are identical into 7 factorial by 6 factorial which gives you only 7 arrangements. It is not that it does not get over right here itself because we know ABC can still make an arrangement of 3 factorial ways ABC, ACB, BAC, BCA, CAB and CBA. Similarly, DEF can give you 3 factorial arrangements. So, it is nothing but 7 factorial by 6 factorial into 3 factorial into 3 factorial. So, our answer would be 7 into 36 because 6 factorial and 7, 7 factorial will only have 7 in between, 7 pending, 7 into 6, 6 into 6 gives you 7 into 36 which is nothing but 252 ways. So, we could make this arrangement in 252 ways. And this is a very simple technique which can help you solve very complicated questions. So, this is my first video on, on preparation for Soliton. There will be many more videos which will be uploaded for students for you guys to prepare. And I thank you so much for the time and patience that you have been provided in watching this video. I would really appreciate if you guys can like, share and comment on my video so you could get further updates about my future videos. Thank you so much.